in the economy, of course. In the name of Jesus, all of these names and all of these different situations. Lord, move by your power divine. To heal and deliver. Help Jerry Cheney, Diane Cheney, Kim Cheney, the entire family, the Johnson family, Tony and Ray, Robert Smith. Of all of these given situations, whatever we are all facing, whatever we are all dealing with. Remember my family, remember my cousin, Lord, Sylvester Jr., the passing of his father, my first cousin, the funeral was this past week. Lord, just strengthen my family. So much going on in so many different families. We pray that you would heal, deliver, and work a work in these last and evil days in which we live in. Strengthen us and keep us, keep our minds forever stayed on thee. Remember those that are in positions of authority that are making decisions that affect our lives as well, Lord. From the president on down, even into local governments, we're praying for those in leadership that it might be well with us, according to the word of God. We thank you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you all tonight. Thank the Lord for those that are with us. And we were talking on last week about uh, understanding the fight. It's a fight out here, y'all. Amen. But we're in it uh, to win it. Yeah. We're in it to win it. As my good friend, uh, Pastor Tim Harris said, uh, never surrender to the enemy. You can win. And so we're in this thing to win. And we're saying to you right now, you are a winner. You are a winner. And on last week, we, were, we left off uh, in uh, the book of Ephesians. And let us go back there today. Ephesians, understanding the fight. We're in this thing, but we're going to understand what we're dealing with. Let us go back to the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number 6. Book of Ephesians, chapter number 6. Come go there with me. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter number 6. And we were um, we were in verse 10 and we were part, partly into this, uh, verse number 11. But let's read, let's read, let's read these uh, these verses, verse 10 through including verse number 13. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against our flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to, to withstand in the evil day and having, and having done all to stand. Finally, my brother, we talked about that last week, about it being strong in the Lord and in the power and in the power of his might. In the power of his might. Glory to God. Yeah. Kratos, Kratos. That's that word in the Greek, which power, strength. Kratos is uh, talking to us about vigor. It's good to have vigor. Vigor. That is a, a power of strength. That is a power of strength of uh, having the dominion. You cannot get this dominion without God. You need it. We know God filled you with the dunamis power. But this Kratos is a strength. It, it is with great power to the fact that you have, that you have dominion. First Peter 5 and 11 says, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So that Kratos is that dominion that comes from God. From God alone. It comes from our Lord and Savior. 
He is the one that gives that dominion. In Jude chapter number one, verse number 25, he says, to the only wise God, our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, Kratos, this God. And so this power and this, this, this dominion, it comes from the Lord. It comes from him alone. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of his might. The abilities that, that come from the Lord. The power of his ability. The power of his strength. That same force. And so moving on down, we got as far, I got as far as um, verse number, uh, in verse number 11, we're all over the place uh, using other scriptures to relate and to back up our point of last week. But we were in that area of putting on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We talked about the wiles of the devil. We talked about the trickery of the devil. We talk about how he, he lies in wait means to lie in wait. He has cunning arts. He's coming for you with cunning arts and deceit and, and craft, uh, craft is his trickery. We dealt with that on last week. We're living in some evil times, some serious days. But I want us to start now today in this in this in this twelfth verse. We're going to go from there, where it says, "For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Against principalities and powers." Romans 8 and 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. We are in God's hands. Nothing can separate us from his love and from his power, from, from, from his love, from God's dominion. He has you. And so, in the midst of all of that, we're saying we're, we're, we're going to understand the fight that we're in. We're understanding this. We're understanding the fight that we're in. The principalities. Principalities. It deals with an origin, a beginning, where something commences. It's a leader. It's a leader. That which anything be that anything begins to be the origin, the active cause. The active cause. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Yeah, yeah. In other words, we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The rulers of darkness against magistrates and angels and demons. But the battle is not yours or mine, but it's God's. Kratos. God already got the dominion. And when you resist him, you resist the devil. The Bible says he will flee from he will flee from you. And this is where we are. Against principalities and powers. Yeah. Powers here is exousia. Exousia in the Greek. Strong said it is the strength or the sense of ability, the force, the capacity, 
Yeah. Exousia. Freedom. Mastery. Magistrates. The superhuman. The potentate. The token of control. Delegated influence. Authority. Jurisdiction. Liberty. Power, right, and strength. Exousia. God gave you the dunamis power. But not only did he give you the dunamis power, he also gave you the ability. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Also, the exousia, the ability, the force, the capacity. Glory to God. The freedom, the mastery. He makes it so. Not so much by your own power or your own will, but by the power of Almighty God. I'm trying to tell somebody that God is here with us. He's got us. He's got us. So what do we, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You, yeah, our fight is not with each other. It's not with your name. It's not with your boss. It's not with family members. It's, it's, it's not with any of them. It's not flesh and blood. But the devil is working behind the scene. The Bible said, the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and he that let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Yeah. The mystery of iniquity. Satan is working behind the scenes. And he that let it will let. In other words, he's, he that hindereth will hinder. Who's hindering him now? It is you and I. It's the prayers of the saints of God. You got the power to hinder, and you will continue to hinder until you be taken out of the way. The rapture, you're going to make it. You have to be determined that you are going to make it. You have to be determined that you are indeed a recipient of the Holy Ghost. And with that Holy Ghost power on the inside of you, striving to live the way God would have you to live, you know, you got to have that expectation that I'm out of here when Jesus comes. Yeah. So who are we wrestling against? Against the rulers of darknesses of this world. The rulers of darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Who are we wrestling against? First Corinthians 9 and 25 states, I like to let the word do the talk. Let the word back up itself. Let it preach and let it teach for itself. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. He says, I therefore so run not as uncertainty, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body to bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a castaway. Yeah. So we're, we're in this race. I therefore run this race not as uncertainty. That's what I'm saying, knowing that you got what you got knowing that you say not in uncertainty yeah but being sure trusting god being sure that you got what you need yeah we got we got to have an understanding who who this fights against who, who we got to under, have an understanding about all of this second timothy 2 and 5 says and if a man also Strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned 
except he strive lawfully. You got to know what you got. <laughs> it's not about out here trying to be a fake Christian. You got to have some real Holy Ghost out here. You know, we're striving. We're striving for a crown. Yeah. Yeah. What is that talking about? That's talking about a contest in the public list to contend in a competition of, or games. You, 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 you are a contender. You are engaging in a contest to contend in public games for prize. It's talking about the ability to endure. God's going to help you. He's helping you right now. He's helping us all to endure. So many have fought good fights and have finished their course. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, so let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with, with patience the race that is set before us. Help me, Lord, in this race. Let, let, help me to have this, the, 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 the patience. Help me to have the patience that I need to have. Help me to run. Help me to run this race and then run into this race. Lord, help me to have patience. And so, if you're in this fight and understanding the fight, you know that your works are going to be tried. Yeah. James 1, verses 3 and 4 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Yeah, the trying of your faith. It's going to be some trials. It's trying of your faith. It's going to be some trials. Yeah. It's going to be some tests. Help us, Lord, to hold on. Help us, Lord, to hold on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. It worketh patience. Causes patience to continue. It work of patience. We're not praying and asking God for that. We don't do that. The trying of your faith work of patience. We don't ask God for that. You asking God for that, you asking God for problems and trouble. The Lord knows how much you can bear. But the trying of your faith worketh. It worketh patience. Yeah, got to have that understanding. That's what it does. This awesome God in which we serve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's a lot of dark stuff going on in this world. That word in Strong says darkness is shadiness. That's a whole lot of shadiness going on. There's a whole lot of obscurity happening in this world. Darkness. Blindness. Metaphorically, it means of ignorance, respecting divine things and human duties and the accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with their consequent misery in hell. That's where darkness will take you. 
of ignorance respecting divine things and human duty. You got to respect divine things. And when it comes to your human duty, what is expected of you, you got to know it. And not only know it, but in knowing it, you got to do it. You got to carry it out. As we just said, the verse we just read in Hebrews, laying aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, besetting things. Get some victory. It's time to get some victory. The Lord is coming back. The Lord has more for you and for your family. God's getting ready to open some great doors in your life, in the lives of the people of God. God still got people he got to save. He got individuals he got to use and put in some powerful places and powerful positions to have his cause to be carried out. He's yet saving. He saves in every generation. I don't care what the generation is. He saves. He places people in different positions for different reasons. And when the time comes, he will use you and open doors for you. He got to bless somebody with much so that they can also be supportive of the things that he has to bring to pass and the things that he has to do. So, we cannot allow darkness to sway us. Hold us hostage. We cannot allow that to happen. Yeah. Darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. God has got you covered. Understand that. We have to have that understanding. And verse number 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. <clears throat> having done all to stand. <clears throat> stand. You know we're in an evil day. These days are evil. And having done all means <clears throat> that you are an overcomer. You're an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. We're overcomers. We got what we need in the church, in the Bible, in the word of God. God has a people. I don't care what other folk are doing. You got to make up your mind to stand for God. You got to be an overcomer. And you got to stand for God. You got to stand. Stand for God. Malachi 3 and 2 says, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. And like a fuller's soap. You got to make up your mind that you're one of the ones that's going to stand. That you're one of the ones that's ever watching. That you're one of the ones that's forever praying. That's what Luke told us in Luke chapter number 12, 21 and verse number 26. Luke said, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all those things that shall come to pass. Some stuff is, some stuff is about to break loose. And then it says, and to stand before the Son of Man. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Yeah, pray always. 
I was saying Sunday prayer works. Lord God, we got to have an attitude of prayer, a spirit of prayer at all times. Praying always. But that great day is coming. Of his wrath is, is, is come and who shall be able to stand? That's what Revelation 6 and 17 says. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Well, what am I saying to the saints? God not gonna drag gonna drag his church through all through no tribulation. He's gonna take his church up out of here. So your standing time is now. Your praying time is now. Your time to be Steadfast is now. Yeah. That time is now. I'm not going to go down into um, verse 14 at this point. Let us go to 1 Timothy chapter number 6 and verse number 12. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. First Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So it's telling us to fight the good fight. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, we, we're understanding this fight, but it's a good fight. It's a good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. Yeah. It's a good fight. And God is the one that's doing it. He's doing it. That's just some things he wants you to do that we got to do. For 1 Corinthians 9, we've already read it. I'm, I'm going to read it again. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25 and 26 says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we as, but we an incorruptible. Our crown is incorruptible. Yeah. You're kings and priests in this thing. He says, I therefore run not as, an, as uncertainty, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. You know, we're punching, but we're not just beating the air, but we're we're, we're, we're throwing knockout blows. Yeah. We're throwing knockout blows. As we resist the devil, the Lord is throwing the blows. Yeah. As we do the things that we're supposed to do, the Lord is doing his part. Yeah. As the devil is trying to drive us into one thing and push us into something, trying to bring all kinds of things to our minds and drive us into certain areas, God is throwing the blows. Yeah. He's in that fight for us. He's doing it for us. He's helping us in this way. Yeah. That's what God is doing. He's helping us. Go to 2 Corinthians verse number 10 and verse number 3. 1 Corinthians 10 and three. We in this world, we in the flesh. You ain't been raptured yet. Hey Amen. You ain't been raptured yet. You still dealing with stuff. The devil ain't fighting you then something wrong. <laughs> 
Somebody said, one preacher said, then you're on this side. But you're going to have some fights, some struggles, some kind of things that's coming against you. But you got to keep your mind. He'll keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. And 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We walk in the flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. <clears throat> you have that? <coughs> Excuse me. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons are for our, our warfare are not carnal. We don't have bam, carnal things, weaponry, guns, and these kind of things. <clears throat> For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. The weapons of our warfare don't pertain to the flesh. They're not bodily. They're not temporal. They're not carnal. <clears throat> they're not fleshly. <clears throat> Yeah, they're not fleshly. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, it says. The weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. Yeah, that's what that does. The mightiness of God, the power of God, the might of God, the greatness of God, mighty through God. <clears throat> so the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imaginations. That's that fight we talked about last week. He comes to your mind, try to fight your mind, pulling, casting down imaginations. Yeah. The reasonings that's going on, the things that's going on, the thoughts that's coming through. Yeah, yeah reasonings that's coming through and one commentator says and those reasonings are hostile to the Christian yeah hostile to the Christian faith it is a dissension a judgment that's hostile to the Christian faith All those thoughts. God helping you in the area of your thought. Of your thought. Yeah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought. Amen. Do it, Jesus. Help us. So, as we're talking about understanding the fight, Understand this fight knowing that God's got you. Understand the fight that knowing that God's fully with you. 
Yeah. Understand the fight. God's equipping you. So, 1 Thessalonians 5. Let's go there right quick. Verses 8 and 9. We are of the day. We are, we, we're not looking around here in darkness, trying to do a whole lot of dark things. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 8 and 9 says, but let us who are of the day, we are of the day. Those that are of the day, he said, let us be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, let us be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. And so we talk about soberness, you know, we talked about to abstain from wine, to keep sober, to be decent, uh, to be sober, to watch. Let us be sober, soberness. Just I'm talking about, it. That's, that's what it's talking about. Let us be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helm and for an helmet the hope of salvation <clears throat> and i didn't get into the rest of <clears throat> ephesians 6 talking about that armor but you got to have that breastplate of faith you got to have that your chest that corset of faith covered your heart covered yeah a faith breastplate of faith and of love that agape love and of love yeah and for a helmet the hope of salvation you got to do your part. If we do our part, God, he does his part. He helps us. I don't know what I would do without the Lord. Yeah. We'll do a whole lot of things a whole lot of other folk are doing. That's what you do. But what am I saying? I'm saying how much we need God. We need him every day. Because God has not appointed us to wrath. That's the verse number nine says, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He's got us. He cares about every last one of us. Yeah. Yeah. So we in this fight. Now you're going you're going you're dealing with some things. We in this thing. But God is keeping you. God is helping you. He's helping you every day. He's equipping you right now. He's opening some doors for you right now. Some things are happening uh good in and, and the good things that are happening that's working behind the scenes in your behalf. You know. So as you draw nigh to God, God is drawing nigh to you. You know, as he, you, I said, as you draw nigh to God, God draws nigh to you. Yeah. And you hadn't finished your course yet. No. Yeah, you fighting a good fight, but you hadn't finished your course yet. You know. And so, Paul said, I kept the faith. So, so we're in this thing. But we're understanding the fight that we're in. We're understanding where we are, what we're dealing with. There's some things that God has prepared for every last one of us, excuse me. Some things that God has prepared for. He's going to use some of you all, especially in these last days. We talk about the lost generation. God always got a people. In every dispensation, God's got people. God's got souls that's going to be saved. 
may not be the same as when you came up, but God's got somebody that's going to be saved. And God's going to use somebody in mighty ways. He's going to open some fantastic doors for individuals in these last days. I'm talking about the God that we serve. That's what he's going to do. He's going to make known some things. Romans 9 and 23 says, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he hath afore prepared unto glory. God's got somebody. And he's going to make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. He's still got souls that he's going to show mercy to, which he hath afore prepared unto glory. God's got those that he has afore prepared for glory. Just like you were created in him before the foundation of the world, God's got a people. And he's going to use some of us to reach them. Everybody not giving up. Everybody not giving in. God still got some people that's holding down with a standing and living for God. Not carried away with all of this foolishness that's going on in the world and the new today church, so-called church. Hello, somebody. God's got somebody. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And so some of us, some, some are just giving in. They just giving in. And, and, and many stripes is coming too. Somebody got to hold on. He says, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Yeah. To the riches. Yeah. And that, he, and that he might make known the riches of his glory. That he might make known the riches of his glory. What is that talking about? That's talking about the wealth as fullness. That is literally money, possessions, figuratively, abundance and riches. Specifically, value, valuable bestowments. God going to bless some people that he can make them a blessing in the last day. Some that will stand with God. Not selling out to Satan and all the things that he's coming and bringing to their imagination, their mindset. Not giving in right now for filthy lucre. But have gone through what they had to go through. The trials and things that they had to suffer. Got their mind together and praying and seeking after God, but God still has a people. Yeah. I was talking about that, that good thing. That thing in which one is enriched. I'm gonna bring this to a close tonight. And I know I'm kind of biting off what we did on last week, but I had to kind of transition into this this week where I'm going. That's where we are. On this coming Saturday, I want to, I want to make sure we don't forget uh, this coming Saturday at the church from 11 to 12, we have our, our first uh, Saturday prayer. Every first Saturday, we're praying from 11 to 1, 11 to, 11 to 12 o'clock noon in, at the church. If you can't make it to the church, you make sure you're praying at home from 11 to 1. But those of us that, those of you all that can get there, be there with us as so we're calling on the Lord. Amen. And depending on how God leads and how God moves, glory to God, prayer and deliverance. So God bless you all tonight. We got to understand this fight. We're in this thing. And God going to use somebody and God's going to bless somebody. You hold on. Yeah. You're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You got to understand the spiritual wickedness that's in these high places. These things that's warring against your thoughts and your mind. It's warring against you because you are special to God. You're mighty in God's hands. 
and God's picking out those that he's going to use in these last days, that he's going to enrich in these last days, that he can bless them so that they can be a blessing to many. God bless you all tonight. Continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for the church. Pray for me as I'm mending and as I'm healing. I thank God for his, his abundant mercies and his loving kindness and his goodness unto me. Let us remember, remember those that are on the prayer list. Let us continue to pray for one and all. All that we have been calling out that's on the prayer list. Let's continue to pray. God bless you all tonight. We're still talking about understanding the fight. Trusting in God. You are already a winner. You're already a winner. You are already a winner. Over here with Jesus Christ, we win. You win. We win. Father, tonight we thank you for all that you've done. All that you're going to do. Work in the lives of your people. Keep us in the center of thine will, the hollow of thine hand. All of the names that we've called out earlier and many others, Lord God, we may have been reluctant to call, but you know about every given situation. There's nothing hidden from thee. You know our thoughts before we think of them. God, move in these situations. Heal our land. Save the masses, save the people. Such a soot should be saved for such a time as this. We love you, Lord. We bless your great name. We thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you all tonight. Go and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us not forget to give. Go online. Amen. Check out Bishop Irvin TV. Also remember that you are to share Bishop Irvin TV. Uh, you are to subscribe and get others to subscribe and you are to like. You are to like. Because we are after souls for the kingdom of God. And we know that Jesus is Lord and that he is the only true and living God. And he is the savior of this world. God bless you and heaven smile on you in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>